Star Wars more stuff. The, I told you. The game plays out. I'm more of a Spaceballs guy than a Star Wars <laughs> yeah, guy. Yeah, that was a similar <laughs> plot there. Rick Moranis is uh, his best stuff. All right, so away we go. Ole Miss, of course, in those road reds. Missouri wearing the black uniforms tonight, looking for their first SEC win in their penultimate home game of the year. This is the starting five for Dennis Gates. We're just talking about Sean East the second. He is their North Star. He's been on a heater of late. He's gone for 26 a game his last four. And this one will stay here with the Tigers. And talking about Missouri, they've been very close this year. It's come down to just a couple of possessions. They're not down, haven't hanged their heads. They are a desperate team for a sense of urgency for that win. So you got both teams really with their back against the wall. Yeah, Missouri had a very competitive showing and displayed a whole bunch of fight and resilience in their loss at a ranked Florida team on Wednesday, ultimately lost by nine. That's Tamar Bates, who has been the running mate for Sean East this year. Another double-figure scorer, and he comes down with the rebound after Jamin Brakefield's miss. Missouri on the move, and Aiden Shaw with an explosion that's, right at the rim. That's their best basketball, Missouri. If they can defensive rebound effectively, get out, run the lanes. Multiple guys for Missouri to play with their head up to lead the break. From backcourt to frontcourt in a blink of an eye. That was uh, Ole Miss's starting lineup. Matt Morell is their most prolific scorer. He's number 11 in the red. He goes for 17 a game. He's been very consistent and steady all year. Offensive rebound for the Rebels. After the Murray miss, Brakefield foul. And Jamin Brakefield, who does a fine job of getting to the free throw line, is headed there right now. So there's the 43-year-old from Chicago in his second season as the head man. He guided Missouri to the NCAA tournament a year ago. They won 25 games. This year, of course, a little different story. However, we talked with Dennis and we talked with several players ahead of this one. We saw a very energized, focused, and detailed team at shoot-around today. That is one constant this year, maybe when the wins haven't been as much. Yeah, and that's all credit to Coach Dennis Gates and his ability to keep these guys engaged and working hard. And that shoot-around today, that was like a full practice. Yeah. So he's still got his team's attention. The 15 losses, nine of them by single digits. So they have been in very arduous, close, tight games, generally speaking. That's a moving screen. That's the first foul on Jordan Butler, who has now started 10 straight games. So ball back to the Rebs. Meanwhile, there is his uh, counterpart on the other side, Chris Beard. In his first season at his three prior Division I stops, Little Rock, Texas Tech, and Texas, went to the NCAA tournament at all three places. This all this team is 19 and 9. They have fallen in recent weeks below 500 in SEC play, though they still have three games left in this regular season. Musa Cisse with the hammer. Good patience against that zone for Ole Miss. Oh, Morrell knocks this one free. Morrell goes up, scoops it in. So both teams turning some defense into offense in the early minutes. Yeah, that's going to be key, I think, for Missouri to do that, to be able to, to keep up with Ole Miss, whether it's turnovers, defensive rebound, and run. And you see what Missouri likes to do, posting up shot now, but they like to play around the perimeter. Oh, the bank <laughs> to get things going for Sean East. Yeah, we're going to see that high ball screen. Uh, trying to get Musa Cisse in that high ball screen at the perimeter at the top of the key a lot tonight. On this side, Cisse tried to set the screen for their playmaking point guard. That's Jalen Murray. Into the corner, Brakefield took some steps. He yeah. shuffled his feet, so there's a turnover. They're, they're, they're all telling him he's going to shoot that. He's one of their better shooters, and they got it where they wanted to against that zone. Here's that ball screen. You see one of... One of the most difficult things for a freshman, Jordan Butler, right? He's moving right there. So there's little things that he's going to understand. Not to move on that screen. Stand still and make your guard run off it hard. Butler, very young for his age as well. He was 17, then turned 18 till the fall. So very young, younger freshman. Threw him into the fire early. Yeah, now he's in the starting lineup. Tacks the rim and scores. It's the only way you are going to improve game minutes. 
game minutes, and he's been able to get some early on as a freshman. The seven-footer from Greenville, South Carolina. And I just saw the same guy. Thing. Yeah, we did. Same thing happened on the other side. This time it's an illegal screen whistled against Cisse. And, and it works both ways. Like, your guard has to wait until the big man is ready. That's a good power dribble going up strong. Whoop, off two feet. Not afraid of one of the better shot blockers in the league, Musa Cisse. Now you bring <laughs> Ole Miss. Takes out one seven-footer for seven-foot-five to Marion Sharp. Again, high ball screen with Ole Miss big fella. Yeah, they got taller. Tamar Bates offline with the straight on three. Sharp got his hands on it, and a new 20 here for Mizzou. East connects again. Yep, we see it all the time. Offensive rebound, kick back for a three because defense is scattered, right? They're trying to scramble back to their man. Also, when you're a shooter, you get that ball and you catch it with your shoulders squared up, it's a much higher percentage shot. Well, is this going to be one of those battles, maybe, between Morrell and East tonight? Two effective scorers. Morrell with a pure-looking triple on the other side. So Mizzou, four or five from the field to start. East has buried two triples. Butler trying to stretch it, left it short. And yeah, that time, Ole Miss just couldn't gather the Loose basketball. East, high off the glass. That's a difficult shot. Nicely done by the fifth-year senior veteran. But that's it. I talked to him this morning. I said, how do you want me to describe your game? He said, slippery. <laughs> and you see him just very smooth, gets to his spot with a soft touch. Murray from deep. Rebound down to Mizzou. How critical is the defensive blast going to be for Missouri tonight? That, that's a big key. Ole Miss, one thing they can do, get on the glass. And the offensive glass gets some extra possessions. Murray rattles home a triple. Jalen Murray had a brilliant month of January. Shot close to 50% from deep. He has taken a, a little bit of a step back in February and trying to get started tonight. A double figure scorer for the Rebels. Yeah, with the Bronx point guard, has been one of the best transfers we've had in the SEC. Of course, the kid down in Knoxville is far. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he might be in the top of the metal right. stand there. Yeah. But Jalen Murray is fitting great. Sharp got a piece of that one, so it's a block for Jamarion Sharp. Now Flanagan now into the front court, coming off the bench for a second straight game. It was Brandon Murray who started for him today. Breakfield with the leaner, fouled. And so Breakfield is headed to the free throw line, and we will step aside. Missouri shooting 50% from the floor to start, and their stud Sean East has hit a couple of from deep already. Off an offensive rebound, Sean East. You got to have your best players playing well. This Sean East, nice sidestep, three nothing, but net puts Missouri up by one. Middle there, that old zoo. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good one. So I wonder if, do you think she, the two kids went to Ole Miss Mizzou? Do you think, you know, her? For fashion reasons, you can only go to schools that start with an M. Oh, uh, the, da the dad's got the, the split, too. He goes with the hat. And the, is that a quarter zip? Is that the QZ? I think <laughs> Rock Mizzou QZ. I that's a QZ. I don't know. Are we abbreviating that one now? Well, yeah, we got to, listen, I don't, we've got to, we've got to make sure that abbreviations are used more often. <laughs> we'll get more words in. Right on, PB. A little pressure here by Ole Miss. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Rebels by one. And again, Missouri's they love to spread out the floor, get the big fella that will dive in on the block. You get a mismatch right there. They missed it. This is Mabor Majak, number 45 in the black. He's going to get a bit more playing time today. No Connor Van over. And that's Tamar Bates knocks down a triple. Yeah, that was excellent pass. Get into the teeth of the defense by Carolero. Hey, remember, Missouri was such a good three-point shooting team a year ago. They led the league at 35% in conference games. They are off to a fine start from beyond the arc today. This is TJ Caldwell, fresh off the bench. Breakfield has hit the offensive glass hard, and he is going back to the free throw line. 
This is his fourth trip already to the strike. That's the senior from Jackson, Mississippi. Ole Miss did a good job of getting the ball to, at the free throw line area. Got it to Allen Flanagan. Now, when he catches that, he turns to his left. Marion Sharp is right there at the short corner. If he just dives straight, if he just cuts straight to the rim without hesitation, Alan Flanagan is throwing that up to him for the alley oop. He hesitated, and they lost that scoring opportunity. We're able to find a pretty good look by Caldwell. Breakfield has been a wonderful free throw shooter this year, 81% on the season. The Oxford veteran, 116 games played now. Went for 21 in a losing effort on Wednesday. Chris Beard said he loved Damon Breakfield's heart post game to local reporters. It was a game in which was tied deep into the second half, but it's just so hard to stay up with that Alabama torrid offense. They lost 103 to 88. One point game in the early goings tonight. Bates in the corner for three. That's strong. Bajac can't get to it. Flanagan does. Caldwell running. Flanagan to Sharp to Caldwell. From six feet. Yeah. Very under. Very impressive. Jamarion Sharp at 7-5 did a good job of staying under control. Wasn't sure if he could handle it, if he could score from there. Like you said, when they went to the bench and pulled Sharp off the bench, they got taller. He's 7-5. He's going up against the 7'2 Bajac. And stays here with 15 on the shot clock. So remember, Kentucky's senior night is Wednesday, and they host Vanderbilt at 9 Eastern on the SEC Network. So the final home game for Kentucky as it marches its way toward the SEC tournament. They we are getting close. They got a couple of guys who they're freshmen maybe their last season. <laughs> yes. Roll them out too. <laughs> I think we see more of that anyway in Lexington the last decade and a half. Kentucky. Scored 111 today. Wow, he is just strong. I it's love Flanagan that. by Alan Flanagan. Recognized that he has the strength, the height, under control, and when he got close to the paint, spin, protect the basketball, just finish strong with the defender. Yeah, that is his specialty. Noah Carter might have taken some steps, and he did. That time, it was Brandon Murray and Sharp that smothered him. Alan Flanagan going coast to coast here for Ole Miss. Spin move. Too small. He's just too big and difficult. The Southeastern Conference has been this year. And Ole Miss has an opportunity still, though, right, to get some key wins. Also in the SEC tournament, you're going to be able to get some really good, really good wins in the tournament. This still seems very much like a focused Ole Miss group, even despite some of the recent struggles, if you will. Flanagan rises from deep. Flanagan gets his own miss, and he draws the foul. So Flanagan is wonderful at that. That's one, one of the best offensive rebounds I've seen. Alex Skywalker Flanagan. My <laughs> yeah, goodness. that was. And that was one of the advantages I thought Ole Miss could have. You see him just follow your shot, right? So that's that, that's classic. He shoots it from the corner, follows his shot. As a shooter, you know where it is you're missing before the defense does. You know if it's short, if it's long, right or left. Great lesson, everybody. Follow your shot because of Alan Flanagan, the offensive rebound, second chance opportunity. Leads to another Matt Morrell triple, so he has eight. He matches Sean East, that duo each with eight points in the early goings. Ole Miss, all their three-point makes have been from that left wing. And the other thing, too, against the zone, you've got to be ready to shoot. Catch and shoot. Be ready, right? You've got to move the basketball, certainly. Ole Miss has done a good job of doing that. But you've got to be ready to shoot. You've got to be hands ready, your feet ready, no hesitation. You know, in that sequence, Morrell gave it up in the corner and then eventually gets it back. 45% from deep his last eight, so that's a large sample size. He's been consistent and undoubtedly the best player on this Ole Miss team on both ends of the floor. Nice response, though, by East. Well, Sean East, you just saw him there. He knows second made bucket on that left side off the backboard, knows where his favorite spots are. The difference, he can get there. So what do you make of this defensive look now from Mizzou? Well, it's still the same zone, except you get Noah Carter coming up. 
to that free throw line area, and that's one of the open areas in the zone. Typically, oh, Sharp using those long pterodactyl-like wings to scoop that one up and put it back off the window. It's a 15 to five Ole Miss run. Four offensive rebounds right now for Ole Miss. They're 30% offensive rebounding percentage. Uh, that's that's number 10 in the league. So it's not something that they normally dominate, but Missouri is one of the, the last in the league in defensive rebounding. So if you want to try to get extra possessions, Ole Miss on the road, that's one way to do it. Well, by the way, Ole Miss gets it back because Jesus Carolero Martin stepped on the the end line when he was inbounding that one. Cisse steps around, Butler rips it away from Shaw, goes up and scores. They're just hammering the paint now. Yeah, they are. They've got the size to do it, the physicality to do it. Not only Cisse at seven feet, but 6'6". Alan Flanagan, Brandon Murray, strong 6'6 player. Matter of fact, Ole Miss, and this doesn't happen very often, they're a better offensive rebound team in the conference play. And I think that's a lot of what Brandon Murray has brought. He's diving on the floor. He's on top of Murray. Murray's able to squeeze it over to Flanagan. Flanagan to the rim. Timeout, Dennis Gates. And yeah, Ole Miss now make it a 21-5 run since they fell behind early. My goodness, they're up 10 now with 9.41 to go. Well, part of the issue for Missouri all season has been who is going to be the next guy up. Sean East obviously playing really well uh, from a scoring standpoint. Tamar Bates also. Can you get Nick Honor, right? I mean, he's he's had some struggles, but shot the ball well. Noah Carter has been a guy that Coach Gates has identified and said, if we can get Noah to give us a little bit more, and then have to have 20, 25, okay? If you can just get a few guys to give you a couple more buckets, that's gonna go a long way for Mizzou. Well, right now, Missouri has given it away five times. That's led to some Ole Miss points. You know, they're bigs right now, and Gates just made a couple of substitutions, but, you know, you had a, the, the two tallest players on the floor in that sequence was Aiden Shaw, a sophomore, and Jordan Butler, a freshman. So they're going up against Musa Cisse, veteran, Jamarion Sharp, veteran, Al Flanagan attacking them, veteran. So, you know I talk about my road recipe. Oh I, oh, I know this recipe. Right, take care of the basketball. Ole Miss has done that, only two turnovers. Glass game, they're winning the glass game. Yeah. High percentage basketball. Six of seven in the paint, layups and dunks. It's a 14 to two Ole Miss run with eight to shoot. East hoists, tipped around, and Cisse comes down with it. How about Ole Miss's defense? They've got four guys out there that are interchangeable. Morrell wants another offline. Carolero Martin contested that deep jumper. And then a loose ball foul underneath that goes against Missouri. And it's the first on TJ Caldwell. And Ole Miss as well when it comes to scoring the basketball. They're 52% from the floor. They've hit a few triples. They've gotten to the free throw line. So things right now are clicking for this Ole Miss team. We talked to Chris Beard about building momentum. They have three games left in the regular season. A team that was a projected tournament team. That's according to our Joe Lunardi for much of the, uh, the bulk of the SEC play. After the Trent Pierce miss, Ole Miss is coming back this way. When you look at some projections, you know, they might be on the wrong side of the bubble, but there's there's a lot of opportunity. Ooh, Chris Beard said, imagine if we finish year 3-0. How does that change things? It would change things quite a bit. And it starts tonight. It's really the only thing you can control if you're Ole Miss. But let's not forget, this is a team on the verge of a 20-win season. They have won the games against the teams they have played. Largely speaking. Flanagan diving for it. He and Noah Carter collided and bumped to the ground. It eventually rolls out of bounds. And it looks like Missouri is going to take over in the backcourt. Well, again, Ole Miss, that length. And they're making substitutions now. T.J. Caldwell at 6'4". You're Flanagan 6'6". Murray 6'5". And Mar Morell at 6'4". So the length, the athleticism that Chris Beard could throw out there defensively. Interchangeable, right? They can switch everything. And against Missouri, who is a team that 
goes small at times and plays outside the three-point line to keep the lane open. It's been helpful. East is going to the free throw line. That time put his head down, got into the paint, and he gets Slippery. rewarded. Slippery. <laughs> Not only was he able to get in the paint, but was able to get that shot off and get to the free throw line. East's trajectory, his upward ascension, if you will, over the course of his career is a fascinating one. He's from Louisville, his hometown. He starts at UMass, then goes to Bradley, spends a year at a junior college, won, won the Junior College National Player of the Year award, and then transfers to Missouri ahead of last season. He was a critical reserve coming off the bench for a 25-win team. This year has taken a major step forward and has turned himself into one of the league's top scorers going for 17 a game. Well, he's had not Not, not uh, very happy about the missed free throw there. No, Coach Gates explained that he needed somebody to step up. Sean East is that, and he, you know, talking to him at five foot seven when he, you know, a few years back, he had to learn how to get to his spots. And I think that's what is different about him is he has the ability because I think left-handed coming at you a little bit different, but he does have that herky-jerky stop-and-go style that's difficult to stay in front of him. Morell's looking for a cutter. Caldwell rises from 16. Rebound down to Noah Carter. No Turns on the push. Jets. Blows by Morell. Loader is long. Sharp comes down with the board. It's an interesting point you bring up. Smaller players getting to the spot. What do you mean by that? How critical is the angles and finding where you can score. Well, you don't have the luxury of bigger guys to be able to use their strength or their size, length. And here, Jalen Murray's another one. Murray lobs it up to Sharp. Sharp draws the foul. And headed to the line for two. When we return, Ole Miss has a nine-point lead on the road with 7-14 against South Carolina and Kentucky. So it has ample opportunities to pick up more call it resume boosting wins some people say quad one wins all it means is wins against some of the best teams in the nation so could they push possibly for a one seed Ole Miss faced that Alabama team on Wednesday they were tied deep into the second half of that game although just ran out of steam Alabama scored 64 points in the second half against the Rebels, Chris Beard was right. He said at post game that we did a lot of good things in the first half. They had a first half lead. Oh, wow, that went D9 by Sharp. But ultimately fell, and so they're trying to bounce back in the month of March here with some wins. Murray got it. Straight on three. Well, you just see the effectiveness of having a rim protector, and Ole Miss has got multiple rim protectors. Starting the break, under control break right there as he got the trail three, which is my favorite. It's, the, it's a shooter's dream, right? The, right From the top of the key as well. And especially where that pass is coming from nearly inside the paint. Great timing. You see how he doesn't go up until Bates leaves his feet. This way he won't get caught in a pump fake situation. A nice pass. Jalen Murray, Juju Murray from the Bronx steps into it. He loves Lance Stevenson. I think he's shooting it better than Lance these days. Who's some of the iconic guys from Kenny, Kenny the Jet Smith, Kareem, best kept secret Reed, who I played with. Of course, Shaheen Holloway, who Juju played for at St. Pete. That's right. Stephon Marbury as Steph well. Stephon Marbury. Make a claim for being the best, and I know they're probably missing a few. What does Missouri have to do here now, Pat? They've, they haven't scored a field goal in four and a half minutes. Well, I think one of the things, first of all, they can't turn it over. We just saw a, a few times where they have turned it over. Sitting at five right now. And then from a you've got to get out and run. You know, how do you create that before that tough Ole Miss defense sets? You've got to gain rebound, right? You've got to gain rebound. And they, we've seen that zone. I think one of the reasons why Missouri is going to that zone, first of all, you've got to prevent direct drives. They aren't some, they, sometimes they struggle with staying in front of the basketball in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Help with defensive rebounding that zone so that you can get out and run. And then force Ole Miss 
to shoot threes. Ole Miss shoots it at 38%, which is pretty good in the SEC. They don't make a whole lot of them, right? Because it's usually Matt Morrell, Jalen Murray has been the majority. So if you yes. can force other guys, other than them, to shoot the three, then you're in business if you Mizzou. But they've just been dominated in the paint as well. So, you know, it's kind of a combination of things that they get to clean up. It's a 20 to 3 run now after the Jamin Brakefield free throws. By the way, Brakefield 6 of 8 at the line already today. Right, and, and also, how do you generate your points? Like I said, Ole Miss is doing a great job of switching when they can just about everything. East is going to have to go to takeover mode. He turns down the three, starts to go to work, skips into the paint, now has to backtrack. Four seconds to shoot. Honor asserts himself into the paint. That shot was at least affected by Sharp. He has been a menace on the interior. Jump ball does stay here, though. And, and the other thing is, what have we seen? Missouri, on their offensive end, everything is challenged. Contested shot. They're working hard, Kevin, for everything. Well, you see on the other end, Ole Miss is finding some open buckets. A couple dunks, open threes. Corner three for Pierce. It matters, making shots. Let's talk to Coach Dennis Gates today. He says, listen, I draw it up. You know, we just got to have somebody step in and make those shots. Trail three again. Break field, no. Sharp tracks it down. Boy, he is feasting in the paint right now. Sharp with four boards and a block. And so Ole Miss can use some clock. Morrell. To jump stop to Murray, one extra pass. Breakfield, nope. Honor, boy, really working hard to box out Murray. He and Jordan Butler collide. Missouri is going to come away with possession here, but Honor is a bit shaky getting to his feet. It's a whole lot of, whole lot of. Yeah. Tiger coming down on you. That's Butler. <laughs> well, you know, it's it, another way for Missouri, right? They're the leading the SEC in free throw percentage. Okay, just what we'll call 81 percent, ninth in the nation. But the issue is, the only team that gets to the free throw line less than them in the SEC is South Carolina. So they're number 13 out of 14 in getting to the free throw line. Therefore, you're not. They can't take advantage of that. So. Uh, but it's just the, the personnel, you know, you just don't have the kind of guys that can attack and draw fouls. Outside of Sean East, Sean East. Sean Bates. Well, they just lost it, so that's another turnover. And that's the sixth Tiger giveaway. And this drought continues. And, and the other thing, too, you, you got to say, Coach Dennis Gates, we watched him last year. He likes pressure coming at you, right? And he doesn't have the personnel like he had last year. Doesn't have the boy Hodge, who was an absolute and wrecking, wrecking crew that they wrecking had last machine. Year. Oh, he it was. turned into Mick from Rocky. <laughs> the wrecking machine. The wrecking machine. <laughs> Fifteen point. You just saw that. The numbers a moment ago, just one field goal for Missouri since the 12-30 mark. Breakfield wow. into double figures now. How did that one get through? Well, you've got to stay in front of the basketball. We talked about that. The inability to defend the group. Pardon me, Breakfield with eight. Regardless, Ole Miss has a 17-point lead with 4.35 to go. Good right hand finish. Just put it up on the glass. The luxury there is he said, let me just get it up off the glass. If we miss it, we get a good chance to be in position for an offensive rebound. He, he's pretty ambidextrous. Is when he goes to the free throw line, he's shooting with his left hand there with the right. Couldn't have asked for a better start if you're old this. He stay in front of the basketball if you are Missouri. Murray wiggles his way through. That was last touch by Missouri. So they'll inbound it underneath the hoop with nine seconds to shoot. And listen, I know Juju Murray's as tough as anybody in the league stay in front of him, right? Uh, however, if he gets to the paint, you saw right there, he can finish, but he was just going to pitch it off for an open three right there to Morrell. Oh, you said it. He spent two years at St. Peter's, and in his first year in the ACC, he really has acquitted himself as one of the finer point guards in the league. He has Maybe not quite to the caliber of a Zakai Ziegler, but that's a high standard. Morrell, late shot clock triple. The one bounces out, and Sharp gets whistled for the over the back. 
And Coach Beard talked about how he identified Jalen Murray in the transfer portal. And he said, listen, yeah, you look at all these guys who put together lists. Maybe Juju Murray's name wasn't at the top of the list or anywhere there. But he came from a winning program. Don't forget right. that St. Peter's team with that deep run in the tournament. He goes, those are the kind of guys I want. And we did a lot of evaluation on, on Juju Murray. And he was a more of a shooter scorer in the past, and he's asked him to play the point guard position this year. And he's done a fan. I mean, it's, he is a huge piece to what they do, to allow Morrell and Flanagan to focus on what they do best. Let's put the ball in the hole. He's top five in the SEC in both assists and assist to turnover rate. Rebound down to Sharp. He has had quite an impact here in this first half. Jamarion Sharp. He's got five boards, three points, but more importantly, a couple of blocks as well. Look at that pass. But then the turnover. Good pressure defense by Mizzou forces that. Turner hounded by Nunez. That's a foul on Austin Nunez. That takes us to a timeout with Ole Miss rolling right now. They're on a 14 to 1 run. And lead it big. I'm sure Patrick's got. Uh, a Chewbacca one too. Everyone's got a Chewy, right? I think so. Just gonna growl a little bit. All right, so let's take a moment to remind you. The SEC Women's Basketball Tournament begins Wednesday in Greenville. You can watch every first round, second round, quarterfinal game on the SEC Network and then the ESPN app. First round coverage begins at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. With now the SEC now crew, first game tips off at 11. So that was key for, for Missouri, right? Nick Honor attacks, gets a foul on the floor, sends him to the free throw line, really good free throw shooter. So those types of things, Missouri can just chip away in those type of ways, take care of the glass a little bit better, get to the free throw line, stay aggressive. You're in the bonus, take advantage of that. Then you make a couple of shots, two, make a couple threes, you're right back in this. Morrell from deep. And there's a foul in the interior that may go against Majak. So that'll stay here. Sharp has been a, has put a lot of pressure on this Missouri team in the paint and close to the rim. He's played some excellent minutes and physical minutes too. Ole Miss is now in the bonus, so it's a one and one for Sharp at the line here. Final year of college hoops, the fifth year senior from Hopkinsville, Kentucky. It's Southwest Kentucky, a little more than an hour north of Nashville. So here is, here's the road Wow, recipe. there it is. So there you go. Ole Miss plus four, turnover margin plus six on the glass. They got another up, make it plus seven. Yes. And a second chance point. Second chance opportunities are crucial going on the road because typically you don't shoot as well from the outside on the road. Typically, uh, you, you, an opponent is a lot more comfortable playing at home. So if you can take care of the basketball, get extra possessions, uh, and they've doing it on the glass game, and they've turned over Missouri seven times. Uncharacteristic for a coach Dennis Gates team. He's talked to me over and over. He's told us, listen, assist to turnover ratio for us is huge. They're, they're, his teams normally turn you over at a high rate. Just different personnel. He can't do those defensive things the way he's done in the past. Mizzou facing its largest deficit. Hasn't hit a field goal in eight minutes. That is a long time. Bates got it to go. So there's the first one in a while. As you mentioned, Missouri playing without Connor Vanover. Remember, they lost Caleb Grill, a starter, nine games into the season. That's a foul on Caldwell. Good stuff there from the freshman, Anthony Robinson, who leads this team in steals. Yes, and, and, and Robinson is a guy who Coach Gates, right, he can put him great, stay in front. You expose that basketball, quick hands, strong hands, quick feet, alert. But he's the kind of guy that can play in that 
high pressure full court defense type of style that Coach Gates likes to play. Imagine him and Moy Hodge. Woo. So after that foul, Missouri in the bonus. So it's a one and one for Robinson, the freshman from Tallahassee. Four star recruit, one of the top 10 players coming out of Florida this past class. He's played in 27 games now this year, getting about 13 minutes a game. And again, to lead this team in steals as a freshman. That'll get you some time. <laughs> There's no question. All right, so Missouri trying to pinch this one back a bit. Down 18 a few minutes ago. That was their biggest deficit. And here's Robinson hounding Murray. Yeah, he's brought in some energy, certainly. There's another. That's on Sharp, a legal screen. And, That's and who was second. it? It was Robinson who was chasing Murray. And a lot of times, if that effort, if Robinson isn't given that effort, right? Now, because he's given that effort, see him try to go around that screen, which forces Sharp to make an extra step, causing the foul. But it was the effort of Robinson that caused him to do that. Wow. Near giveaway, yeah, Robinson turned it over, and Nunez. He was right up in East's grill that time. That Sharp. That's how you deny somebody the basketball. Robinson knocked it away. Good hands by the freshman again. Got him back. Lead feed to Robinson inside of two minutes. Kick out to Carolero Martin. Now on the drive. Looking for somebody to bail him out. Back to the big man. He spins. Blocked. Still keeps it. Wrap around pass. Sharp got a piece of it again. Another rejection by Jamarion Sharp. A brilliant first half. And give it to the big guy. East just had to shove him there. <laughs> so let's see. For Sharp, making three. That might be four blocks now. What a weapon. OK, one. It's a straight up denial. Oh, wow. That's right in the fingernails. He cut his fingernails, so he was able to get that block. <laughs> yeah. But then he runs the floor, puts East on his back, gets wide and big for that pass. Four blocks and six rebounds in the first half for Jamarion Sharp. Who, again, you thought maybe in a matchup like this one, he would be a big factor. He did not play that much against Alabama. That's a team that runs up and down the floor. Only played 10 minutes in that game. This is the NCAA's active blocks leader. No current player has more block shots than, than Sharp. So you might go, oh, well, he's a fifth year, right? That'll, that makes sense. Not so fast. He's only played Division One ball for three years, so he leads all Division One active shot blockers in blocks in one or two less years. Is essentially what I'm trying to say. Well, certainly he's blessed with the length, seven foot five. We understand that, but he's also got timing to understand when to block shots, keep blocked shots in play. How important is that? We've seen a direct transition bucket by Ole Miss a couple of times just because he's blocking shots and keeping it in play. You know, it's fun swatting it into the fifth row. Yeah, right, nice highlight, but can you keep that ball in play to start the break for your team? Ole Miss by 15, a minute to go in the first. Nunez, jump stop, out to Murray. Hoist it, got it! Jalen Murray, and it's back to an 18-point lead. Well, you talked about him and his impact, and if he can get it rolling back from that three-point line. Is that a jump ball? Yes, it is. Possession arrow favors Ole Miss. And Mizzou, one of its last ten on this end of the floor. Juju just getting his rhythm. You see, got his rhythm and a little step back to create space over the defender. So you can Missouri see now. Ole, Ole, go ahead. Ole, Ole Miss has got multiple guys. Brandon Murray, you give him the basketball, he can make a move score one on one. Certainly, Matthew Morrell can't lose him tomorrow. Man, he splashes one. That's the sixth Ole Miss triple in this first half. They're up 21. You can run offense through Brandon Murray. Obviously, Ju Juju Murray. Matthew Morrell's a good decision maker. Yeah, Breakfield, Murray, and Morrell, they've combined for 30. 
of Ole Miss is 45, that backcourt trio. Flanagan's has only played nine minutes. He hasn't been featured too much on the floor in this half. East high off the window before the clock expires. And that'll help. He's good off Ole that backcourt, isn't he? Yeah, yes, he is. And Sean East finishes the first half with 13. But his team is down 19. And Ole Miss is 15 and 3 this year. He had a school record 10 last month against, uh, make it two months ago against Florida. Matt Morell is to see at the bottom led the way with 11 points. However, PB's road recipe for a victory away from home is uh, looking pretty good for Ole Miss. Shaw draws the foul, but why do you? Why do you look specifically at those numbers? What's critical to the road win? Well, you got to value the basketball, number one, okay? And against Alabama, Ole Miss had 14 turnovers, 19 points off turnovers for Bama. So take care of the basketball. You are able to get good percentage. Uh, get a look at the basket every time down. High percentage field goals. You see three-point field goals right there. 38% on the season. They're getting open looks. The rebounding margin, the glass game, I felt like they could get on the glass and get some extra possessions and extra buckets. And then, of course, uh, which the points in the paint, the high percentage basketball as well goes towards that. Nothing higher than a dunk or a layup or an open shot. It's a recipe for success. Some may say it's a recipe as good as Funky's Pizza in <laughs> Oxford. <laughs> We've got a good little recipe down there, good pizza. Breakfield draws the foul. Going to the line. The owner of uh, Funky's Lee is here. Oh, is he? They traveled really well. Ole Miss traveled really, really well. Oh, I'm glad that Coach pointed you in the in right direction there. Good I, I got to get a slice there sometime. Lively. Yeah, there's some Ole Miss gear. Ten points for Breakfield. You saw us hit the six free throws in the first half. The other, Look, it took a shot to the nose, it looks like. To the bridge of the nose. Yeah. And the other thing we're talking about high percentage basketball, quick shots, bad shots are going to lead to runouts by Missouri. So if Ole Miss, they take a good shot and they miss it, your defense is still in position to get back and defend in transition. And your players know where those shots are coming from, so they're ready to react to those, which helps on the offensive glass and get back in defensive transition. Shaw spins. That's a savvy move by the sophomore that time. Great ball movement. Snuck in there right at the SEC logo area. Good spin. And understanding that Musa Cisse, the other seven-footer, is a shot blocker as well. So got it up high and quick. So here's what's at stake, Pat, in the second half. You see the Missouri record. It is in search of its first SEC win. It does not want to hit to the finish line with a zero in the win column. They've got two and a half games left tonight against the Rebels at home this week against Auburn and at LSU. Robinson skips into the paint and scores. So Anthony Robinson the second, the freshman from Tallahassee, has given Dennis Gates and his team some quality minutes tonight. And that's off of the turnover by Ole Miss. Missouri comes down, doesn't score initially in transition, but did a good job of running their offense, attacking the paint. Breakfield lost it, but he's bailed out by the whistle. Is you know, something you know what's going to happen here. Missouri is going to come back in this game, fight, attack it. The second bucket at the rim in a row, two possessions in a row, got it to the paint. And really, Ole Miss did an excellent job in the first half of keeping the zoo outside of the lane, other than Sean East getting a few buckets in there. Morell is wide open and splashes another. Matt Morell now four of seven from beyond the arc. He is lethal from deep. And that's a careless giveaway. Sean East is trying to keep the freshman up after the poor pass. Coming back the other way. High percentage shot in the corner. Nobody in his area code as he puts up that three. And the other thing is, too, when you, when you look at going on the road, your best player, your best scorer, Right, he has got to be on. And Matt Morell is explosive. 
And he's feeling it tonight. Got an offensive foul. He threw out the old chicken wing. Old chicken middle. wing. Yes. That's Shawnee's doing a good job of staying close chest to chest. Not committing the foul, but just staying close enough. Brandon Murray said, I need a little breathing room. <laughs> just can't do it like that. There's Matt Morell's numbers against Missouri this season. Two weeks ago, scored 26, hit six triples. Tonight, 14. He's connected four times for deep. It's the first foul on Brakefield. That's three of fouls on Ole Miss in the first two and a half minutes of the second half. Boy, Matt Morell, a special player. The senior from Memphis. He grew up in Whitehaven, about an hour from Oxford. Has been very loyal to this program and is having undoubtedly a career year in his senior season. It's not just the very productive point scoring, it's how efficient he's doing it. He's close to 50% from the field this year. And as I mentioned, better than 40% from three. And he's taking a high volume. Robinson got it to go. Robinson hesitated on that three-point shot a couple of possessions ago. That time, he was ready, feet set, catch it in rhythm, no hesitation. So seven points for the freshman. Breakfield had it poked away by Butler. Lucky to keep it. Behind the back, over to Mur uh, Murray. Not that time. Caldwell on the backside. Just gathered that one over eight in Shaw. He has now 10 offensive rebounds. Backdoor cut. Caldwell beats his man and throws it down. Caldwell read that perfectly as did Juju Murray. Sean East denying the wing. Direct cut by Caldwell. Great read by Murray. Both of them results in that easy two. That's high percentage basketball. Yeah, it is. Good. Shaw bounce pass. He slipped. And there was some miscommunication there defensively by Ole Miss. And so Aiden Shaw has another basket here in the second half. He's got six. Now, he was very good against these Rebels two weeks ago. Shaw turned in one of his finer games of the year. Ten points, five boards, a couple of steals. But it's still Rebels by 16. Murray splits a pair of defenders, got inside the paint, went back to uh, Breakfield. That's the second time Breakfield has shuffled the feet before he put the ball down, so it leads us to a timeout. And it was a great read off of the denial on the wing by Sean East. Juju Murray saw it. And Caldwell did too as it goes up, rises high like Skywalker on Star Wars night. We're almost 100 at rough today. Yeah. <laughs> Kentucky obviously puts up 111. The question is, right now, who will be the projected one seed in that tournament? in about an hour or so because Tennessee and Alabama it's the battle for first place going on right now down at Tuscaloosa Alabama holds a six point lead against the first place falls right now okay there's a there's a bucket for Missouri back to a 14 point game now you see a little full court pressure not quite what we've seen in the past from coach Gates's teams but they're feeling a run coming here in Mizzou that's their fifth bucket Five for five in the second half. Four of them in the paint in one three. They about, they, yeah, they got scored Ole Miss 11 to six. Great field, can't answer. Getting good shots, Missouri. Ooh, good awareness. <laughs> Great awareness by Butler. <laughs> Using the force right there. Yes. After the giveaway, they get the fortuitous balance. 51-37. Still early in the second half. Carter cutting hard. Drives to the rack. Looked like Brakefield was the one who got a piece of it. That was such a nice cut. And then Morell is fouled by Carter. Got the up screen there. Caught it. But guess what? Ole Miss has Jamarin Sharp back there. And what's beautiful about having a shot blocker like that, they got Musa Cisse too. 
things that cut off the screen is if there is a mistake, he can clean it up. He's a fixer. Ole Miss has blocked five shots. They are one of the best shot blocking teams in America. Matter of fact, they're sixth in the nation in, total, in blocks per game and block percentage, meaning how often are you blocking shots? Murray, that was a doomed possession it looked like from the start. Didn't quite have a handle on it. And now numbers, if they hurry. East now caught in the corner. There's a double. Carolero Martin bails him out. East to Butler. And he's going to work now on the smaller wow. Morrell. Got it, and the foul. They can get it back to an 11-point game here. Robinson has been such a spark plug. Started in the first half. Again, now the pressure on Juju Murray turns him over. Got the mismatch. Wow, that was just a very patient move. Mm. Great spin move. Great footwork. Hands. He, we saw him in the first half. Yeah, he's got, there he is. Got the offensive rebound. Parkinson there. He was the shooter. Yes, he was. Carolero Martin, offensive foul. So, Brakefield with a clever move there to get the whistle. That's the first on Carolero Martin. That is what we call player control. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, not just a clever move. That was a, a true offensive foul. Yeah, seeing that angle. Put the shoulder down. And a lot's been talked about blocks and charges, and changing the rule or adjusting it. That was probably an easy one. So Mizzou for a moment, they're thinking maybe we get two for one instead. Look at this defense. Wow. It's Rich Robinson. But you can, at a point guard, if you've got a point guard that's dedicated to defend like that, he can change how you run your offense. Morrell, that one was blocked. Carolero Martin went head first into the Ole Miss bench after getting a piece of it. Now he's feeling it. Hoist it. Left it away short. And yeah, missed everything. Caldwell gets the whistle. So it's another foul on Butler. That's his third. Let's take a moment to remind you that Monday night, SEC Inside gives you the all-access pass into the Auburn men's basketball team, plus the Texas A&M women's basketball team. Again, this is interviews with coaches, players, staff, administrators, everybody. Great behind-the-scenes footage of what it's like day-to-day -day inside both of these programs, and two winning programs with that. at 7 and 7.30 Eastern on Monday. Again, this is a great match. Robinson not fouling, just harassing Juju Murray enough, trying to, if he can't steal it, affect how Ole Miss runs their offense, where they run it from. That's a great catch and shoot. Caldwell with the jumper that time. Ole Miss maintains its double digit lead. It has led for all but four minutes of this game. Took a lead around the midway mark of the first half. Have a look back. Majak got it. That was a great pass by Carolero. Held his held his dribble just long enough. Knew where he was going with it. Really, he got it. The only place you could, where the defense couldn't get it. Great job by him. The fifth-year senior from the Andalusian gym, Malaga, Spain. That's right. You Foul guys there. had a long conversation. Really, the help there was only Juju Murray. A little slow rotation. By Brakefield there, he should have saw the disadvantage that his defense was in. Hey, but Jacques with his first basket tonight. He was really good in that Tennessee game a couple of weeks ago. Was the near upset win over the fifth ranked Vols on the 20th. And Bajak playing a lot of minutes tonight because Connor Vanover out with a concussion like symptoms after his best game of the year a couple days ago against Florida. Morell attacks, draws the foul, and so the savvy vet is headed back to the free throw line. Matter of fact, these are his first free throws of the evening. Well, he's going to stay aggressive. Slowly, Missouri chipping back into this game. And it's been a combination of defensively, they've turned over Ole Miss, and they found high percentage shots. Oh. 
Morrell went for 25 last time these two teams squared off against one another. His ascension, hmm, it's not just the increased points per game number there, it's he is a much more efficient and effective scorer. Look at the number, uh, the percentage jump from last year to this season. Uh, he was a oh, six foot four explosive athlete. He could always attack, finish at the rim. The improvement, he's a much consistent, a much better consistent three point shooter this year. A lot of folks around this league Honor hits the 19-footer. Think that he is a next-level player. Oh, there's no question. Yeah, he has proved that this year. He's got the build for it. Continues to improve that shot. Going to initiate the offense here with Murray on the bench. It's a vexing defense right now by Mizzou. Here's Caldwell, there's a three, down and out. Stays here, and so Ole Miss gets a new 20. When night is the annual Rally for Ryan game. And Missouri, it's the annual game where the athletic department raises money for cancer research. The prior eight years of this university holding this annual event, they've raised more than half a million dollars for cancer awareness and research, which is just incredible, quite admirable. And this team continues. Saw a couple players visiting Coach Nutt Absolutely. in the hospital. Coach we Nutt, we love you. Yep. I, I know the, the, the Nutt family very well. Of course, I uh, was texting with Coach Houston Nutt, former uh, football coach for Ole Miss, oh, yeah. Arkansas. Um, and, and, you know, he's, he expressed how he appreciates all the love. I know Coach Nutt, Coach Dickie Nutt is watching right now. And we wish him the best as well. Coaching family, okay? Oh, yeah. Dennis Nutt at Washita Baptist. He was a great basketball player. Danny Nutt coached football with Coach Houston Nutt. And their father was the head coach at the Arkansas School for the Blind and Deaf. He was a great basketball coach. That's a great basketball shot by Sean East the second. Their royalty in Arkansas. And Missouri getting high percentage shots. We talked about that in the first half. They turned the ball over, which not only is it taking away a possession from you, but it set Missouri's offense up. Oh, oh Jamarian Sharp. He's got it back. Is he going to do it again? Throws it up. And he's going to the free throw line. Wow. The collision at the rim that time. Going Space that, Jam style. Was that Tamar Bates? He might be the most courageous man in this whole building. Take it on Jamario Sharp like that. Rice it up and try to meet the seven foot five big man. But listen, that's a the apex effort by Tamar Bates. And, and you know, unfortunately for Mizzou and their defense, they. Ole Miss gets it back, but you, you know you're not going to block a shot, but you at least got to make it difficult for him. And it was that effort. Th that, those are the little things, though, right? Little effort plays. Robinson, we've seen him do it. Now, again, Ole Miss gets it back, goes to the free throw line. But if you're Missouri, you're chipping away any way you can. 50-50 ball here, a defensive rebound there. You swing the ball, extra pass for an open three. Attack to get to the free throw line. The zoo is 9 of 11 as well from the field this half. Carolero Martin finds the cutter. Bates! Bates sees a 17. Going for 17 a game in SEC play. Tonight he's been a bit quiet. It's been all Sean East. He's got the 18 to lead the way for all Missouri scorers. Mizzou trying to lock in on this side of the floor. They need stops. Morrell, little stutter, drive, kick, three. Great field. Oh, that was pretty. It, it, it was just that extra effort. Matt Morrell was just able to get his shoulders by his man, get to the paint, which forced help. Nice pass on time on target to Breakfield. That's now 14 for Breakfield. 
He and Morrell have gone for 33 combined. Keaton Shaw barges it in to break. Kicks it out to Honor for three. Splashes one from the wing. Nick Honor with his first three of the night. Well, you know he's going to be ready to catch and shoot. That's just, I love that skip pass. The opposite side of the floor. Defense not expecting it. Inside of nine minutes now, Pat. It's a 12-point game. Ole Miss once led by 21 late in the first half. Murray, that jab step. Oh, man. Hand down, man down. And this is where players, they've got to make plays. And if you have a veteran, good decision-making backcourt on the road, that is as good as gold. Ole Miss has been very effective from deep. Yeah, Sharp with his sixth block of the night. Eight to Shaw gathers it, though. Blocking foul, and Shaw has a pair at the line. So they stick with it. And the sophomore earns two. Look at this work uh, from the perimeter. That's it. Good attack move. And that's all it took. Force Bates to in that help position, leaving open breakfield. And we talked about it before. Ole Miss has multiple guys. We talked about Morrell, Murray, both Murray's, Brandon in, Juju. Just guys at the end of shot clock can get their own good shot off. It's so valuable to have the Allen Flanagan is another guy who could do that. Heck, even, you know, even Brakefield, he's a very versatile guy. He plays outside the three-point line where you got to respect that. And he can take it to the hole. Ole Miss has hit 10 threes. So they're 40% from beyond the arc now. Now, you mentioned Flanagan. We really have not seen too much of Flanagan today. It's been a whole lot of T.J. Caldwell getting some run in the backcourt here. Wow. That's a 10 count. Yeah, they didn't get over, get it over in time. Ball back to the Tigers. And that was that aggressive style that we've seen from Missouri, getting the turnover. Wasn't a live ball turnover, but still you take it, getting an extra possession. Mizzou desperate for its first conference win. Honor, baseline drive, kicks it out to Carolero Martin. He's got it. Down the lane, floater, yes. Drive, kick, drive, kick, drive, paint touch. Nice floater by Sean East. Playing down north-south directly to the paint for uh, Missouri. And for East, his fifth straight 20-point game. Defense has picked up Missouri as well. Get down in the stance. He's starting to cook. And Sean East, there's no doubt about it. He's slippery. You can call him whatever you want. Great stop and go. But he's got a great floater. Knows how to create space. And finish with the soft touch. Ole Miss up 12. In a Kentucky host Vanderbilt just scored 111 today. Let me start doing the math there. 117 last week, 91 during the week, 111 today. Pushing three three bills the last of three games. <laughs> yes. No one's on the network, 9 Eastern, remember? That's a, more than 300 there. That's 319. Thank you. So a 14-point cushion here for the Rebels with 7.20 to go. We see an opportunity to chip away from the free throw line without the clock moving. Both teams in the bonus. Dennis Gates has been so complimentary of how East, in his two years at Missouri, playing at the highest level, remember, playing in the SEC, has evolved not just as a playmaker. We talked about his jump from, you know, reserve minutes last year to premier scorer this season, but just as a leader as well. He's so committed to his routine. You know, Kevin, that's, it's admirable. Well, one of the things you see with all great players, really good scorers, is they understand their strengths and weaknesses and how to get to their spot on the floor. 
Morrell dribbles it right into Shaw. Great job keeping it on the sideline. Yeah, Murray back into the game now with eight to shoot. Into the paint, it's a dangerous pass and it's a turnover. Carolero Martin starting the break. Going to work on the smaller Murray. Honor slips free in the corner. Three's in the air. Boy, that was halfway down and out. Great look. Good tight job by Sean up. East. Yes, Jeez. it was. All of a sudden, it tightened up over there. No home cooking there on that <laughs> rim for Missouri. Morrell, how did he get that pass around the big man to Cisse? So that's like a five-point swing. The yeah. triple looked very good on one end of the floor, and instead, Cissé over here. So all of a sudden, if you're Ole Miss, you're six minutes away from picking up a win to kick off. Whoa! Whoa! Aiden Shaw up top to stuff it down. The degree of difficulty to catch that at the peak with one hand. It's so good. Let's see it again. Nick Honor gets in the paint. Good things happen when you get in the paint. He just throws it up high to Aiden Shaw now. So that has been the thing we feel like in the second half of Missouri can continue to turn over Ole Miss. It's just going to give them a chance. So that has got to be number one thing for Ole Miss. Take care of the basketball. That's a foul on the Jacques. So Ole Miss in the bonus. And they're going to send a... A lousy free throw shooter little, to the line. A little hack of Cissé? Yeah, you know. Like a hack of shot? I, yep. I, I think we're on to it here, partner, because Cissé is 10 of 34 at the line this year. Well, Coach Gates, again, has got six minutes left. How can we generate more possessions for yes. ourselves? To turn them over, foul from the free throw line, and get the ball back. There you go. At least for the first shot, it worked. Pardon me, yeah, that, okay. Ole Miss is in the double bonus. And so now if you can get yeah, 10 fouls on Mizzou this half. Even if you trade two for one or three for one in terms of points, well, it's a savvy move there. Not too much time comes off the clock. And the Tigers go back to work. Pack a Cisse, yeah. <laughs> It works there. I don't think Jake Jack wiggles in. Got it to go. You wondered when he was going to make his impact. And I don't think ha uh, uh, Shaq liked that terminology, so I'm sure Musa wouldn't like it either. No. <laughs> Old Miss by 11. Hmm. And another collision in the paint. That's on Bates, and that will send Cissé back to the line. So. You know, it's interesting when you talk about intentional fouls. And in this situation, you see Cissé is making a move, cutting to the basket. Um, <laughs> so it's a little <laughs> different situation. On Bates right. face. And we had, we, we had this in a, in a game previous. And I had a conversation with the officials, and they were saying, yeah, I mean, we're, we're aware of that intentional following to get a certain guy on the free throw line. And, and you know, there are times we won't allow that. Uh, but if the guy is making his move and you s s get in front of him like uh, DeMar Bates just did, they can't call anything well, else but regular foul. Cissé just went 0-4 at the strike. So they just bought two possessions here. Coming up on the five-minute mark, Bates. He's got the smaller Murray on him. Goes up. Down and out. Bates is going to the free throw line. And I mean, this is the exact opposite type of free throw shooter going to the line. He leads the SEC at 92%. He knew the mismatch. Missouri, the other four guys did a great job of just staying wide. And if there was a double team action, you could kick it out to the three point line. But this is a dream scenario for Missouri, right? You were able to get the two fouls, get to the guy to the free throw line that you wanted. Breakfield back in and Cissé takes a seat for this uh, impending Ole Miss possession. 
Well, the last time Missouri was within single digits was at the 9.54 mark in the first half. Here they are again with about five minutes to go. Field, good position, turns, trying to give it off to Murray. Mizzou takes it away. Honor launches. Left the three short. It was on target, just a fraction short. Missouri today just six of 18 from deep. Ole Miss with the lead with four and a half to go. In search of its 20th win of the year. Carolero Martin takes it away. Ball still free. Up ahead to Bates. He was right on the half court line. Basket. No, before the basket. So that's a foul on Brakefield. And so a one and one here for Mizzou coming up. The pressure defense of Missouri is back there getting down, diving on loose balls. Tamar Bates has taken over the last three possessions. You know, and Carolero Martin pounced on that one right at the half court stripe. Every part of the body, though, has to be over the half court line for you to have established position in the front court. Well, also, what I love is he could have very easily called the timeout just to maintain possession. But he understood that we've got numbers. If I can find a way to get this up the floor, we got numbers. We're playing an advantage. So that's a smart play by him. It would have been okay if he called the timeout, you got the possession. But he knew to get it to Tamar ahead and let him make a play. All right, Pat, we've had a bit of a flip. This is an 8 nothing Missouri run. They are certainly within striking range now with 4.10 to go. For the first time, a bit of electricity in the building. <laughs> Spread out, Murray puts it up, bounces out. There's a whistle, and this one may go against East. It's a foul on East. That'll send Brakefield to the line when we come back. All of a sudden, Pat, things have tightened up. Yeah, and it's been Missouri's defense that has been able to do it, getting the passing lane. Watch, Pat, didn't they? They had watched their opposition go on an 8-0 run. Brakefield at the line here. Think of how they've done it, right? They've got, they've made it a little more difficult for Ole Miss on the offensive glass. They've turned over Ole Miss. The two fouls on Cisse sending him to the line worked. They're one of six at the line. One of their last six at the stripe. Ole Miss is the last few minutes. But they still have the lead. And that's what's most important. Look at East just working his way down, and he muscles up for his 22nd and 23rd points, six-point game. Well, that is the fifth time where either Sean East or Tamar Bates have put their man on their hip. Patient. Murray on the attack, picks up his dribble. Somebody's got to bail him out. Caldwell goes up. Shaw blocked him. Rather, it's a foul on Bates. Yeah, that, that makes more sense. That looked like a clean block, so Bates got him with the body. That was a good cut by Caldwell right there. He saw Murray was in a tough situation. Goes straight into Tamar Bates. Right into his chest, forcing the officials to make the call. That's the fourth foul on Bates with 3.08 to go. Caldwell, the sophomore from Dallas, a 76% free throw shooter, has one more coming. You know, we, we always talk about winning at the end of games, and it always comes down to free throws. Can you get layups, dunks, high percentage shots? Can you take care of the basketball? Well, Ole Miss, for some of its recent woes at the line, remember, they are now plus eight at the strike compared to Missouri. They've made 19. Tigers have only made 11. Sean East has been option A, B, and C of late. He's got the smaller Murray on him. Gets in again. Another one off the window. That's good. Sean East 
uh, that's attacking the rim. They get the switch, so Murray is on East. East a little bit bigger, stronger. But Morell stays to help. He finds a crease to split the double team. A nice soft touch off the backboard. It's a two-possession game, and they're a uh, collision so, right so in front of the Ole Miss bench. <laughs> Again, that's a foul purposely, but it's in the action. And you see right there, Mar Matt Morrell says, I'm going to stick around this time. I'm not going to let Sean East just back my point guard down as long as he wants. But just the craftiness of splitting that double team. And where does he get to where he's comfortable? Left hand, that, that left side of the basket is going to put it high up off the backboard. Again, though, that purposeful foul by Missouri since who they want into the free throw line. Sharp, not quite as lousy at the line as Cisse. He's 20 of 36 this year. Today, 5 of 9 at the stripe. You know, I'll underscore a point that you mentioned there. It's it's got to be in the action of a play. You, you, let's say the ball is being inbounded. You can't just right. hold on to a player's body because that, an official could deem that to be a, a Class A technical. It's really. two free throws. Sharp missed them both. Missouri can get it back to a three or a four-point game. Morell is just not going to let East touch the ball. Shaw lost it. There's a foul, though, on Sharp. And so Aiden Shaw is going to the free throw line. See, on this, on this replay, I'm surprised Sharp tried to get down. Watch him get down and dig instead of recovering and getting big, right? He, he was in position to just get big. Seven foot five with those arms. No reason to dig down on it and commit the foul. Oh, it was on Murray. Well, if that's the case, that's his fifth foul. So Brandon okay. Murray, you know, his value is terrific on the defensive side of the ball. He has been excellent. You know, very dependable sixth man. He's started now the last couple games for Ole Miss. He has to sit the rest of the way with 219 to go. Well, everything I said, forget about it. There wasn't a foul on Char. That was uh, Brandon Murray getting caught reaching in. Hey, one last reminder, SEC Women's Hoops Tournament, it begins Wednesday in Greenville, South Carolina. Watch all the action right here on the SEC Network. Coverage starts at 10.30 Eastern, 10.30 a.m. Eastern on the network. Four-point game. Missouri was down 21 at the end of the first half. And they are very much back in it with 2.10 to play. Morrell on the attack, rises, blocked by Carolero Martin. Morrell gets it back, timer is running short, four seconds, ball out of bounds, Mizzou takes it. Carolero Martin's effort has been exquisite the last 10 minutes of this game. The timing on this was incredible, that block is Matt Morrell, he knows he's going to make a play, gets to the paint, but the timing by Carolero. He's played excellent defense. We've seen him in help position. No one on this floor has had a greater impact who hasn't scored. See Missouri again. He's going back to the line, using his body. Well, a big key there is to get that switch, to get Matt Morrell off of Sean East onto the smaller Juju Murray. And East has had, it's his game. He understands how to play at that pace, back you down, back you down. He's very good at it. So Coach Dennis Gates, very creative in how to get Sean East that mismatch. This chess game continues to play out. Yeah, Coach Beard realizes he needs another guard on the floor. Nunez has played some really good minutes for him. Again, there is no Al Flanagan out on the floor. We have been told that he is out for the remainder of this game, but no word whether or not if it's an injury, so he is unavailable. Brandon Murray fouled out, so here we go. That's a foul. And that sends Caldwell to the line where he just split a pair. 
Wow, you, this is a like, two-point game with 138 to go. You like the aggressiveness by the defense, and Carolleros certainly has brought a level of energy. But a foul there, you just move your feet. Your half-court defense has been great. You just forced a turnover with one second on the shot clock in the previous possession, but credit Caldwell. He knew he had to take the responsibility of bringing the ball up the court and getting his team in some offense. They've had some woes at the line well, the last five, six minutes. Shoot. You know, these kind of free throws, on the road, tight game, that's a lonely place, the free throw line. Benjamin's deep breath. And you get the good result. So a timeout taken by Ole Miss with 1.38 to go. And I'm sure Coach Chris Beard wants to talk about defensively how we're going to defend Sean East and Tamar Bates. And a lot of that is communication. Ole Miss, we talked about it before, they have the ability to switch because they do have a lot of bigger guards. Just old uh, Missouri's done a good job of finding that mismatch through their screens to get Sean East the ball. Missouri knows what's at stake. Everybody knows what's at stake here. They have three games remaining, including tonight in the SEC tournament, to pick up that elusive SEC win. Yeah. They were down 14 with eight minutes to go. So fast forward about six and a half minutes. Missouri has gone on this yeah, they slow crawl. but patient 19-8 yes. to eight run to get it back to a three-point game. And it had to happen, though, with your guys, your players making those plays. East, Bates, the smart defensive plays, Carolero, Robinson. East has been the man. It's a 27-point game for Sean East. There's a switch. Morrell fights over it. East hands off. Shaw is stuck. Still in the paint there. There's a whistle and a foul. And Shaw is going back to the free throw line. That's another on Jalen Murray. So Coach Chris Beard takes out Juju Murray for that defensive stand. Pardon me, that's on Brinkfield. I'm sorry. Yeah, now he's going to bring back Juju Murray here for the offense, but took him off of that defensive possession. Matt Morrell ooh, ooh, did a fantastic job. Matt Morrell did a fantastic job of fighting over that screen to not get the switch, which would have put Nunez on Sean East. So, yeah, now it's a switch in offense for defense for Ole Miss. Shaw misses them both with 120 to go. This is where you're thankful to have great guard play on the road with the lead. Murray into the corner. Great field. Couple of jab steps. Right hand dribble. Spins twice. Goes up. Puts it in. A grown man move by Jamin Brakefield to extend the lead back to five. Inside of a minute, East gets close. There's a foul before the shot. And I believe Dennis Gates was granted a timeout. Timeout, Missouri. 51.5 to go, Pat. Yeah. Just a great move. Brakefield gave him two pump fakes. Two pump I love the pump fake, right? And then the spin move. He's another one, plays with patience, good footwork. He's off balance, too, finishes with right. It was just great job by Juju Murray, right? He was looking for the crack in that defense, made an excellent swing pass. Defense wasn't expecting it. And Brakefield could have shot that three, could have catch and shoot that three, but said, you know what? I'm going to get to the rim, get to the paint. And Brakefield now with 17. So, Pat, there's our reset. You see the possession arrow 
it favors Mizzou. And so with 51.5 left, Pat, it's a five-point lead for Ole Miss. Missouri, of course, has got it here. Got the light show going on, by the way, inside the Missouri Arena. That's a, that's a nice touch. Got What's light going on? Everywhere. <laughs> yeah. What's going on in that Missouri huddle? Well, you know Missouri is going to drop a play to get Sean East uh, uh, free from Matthew Morrell. And I think Matt Morrell did a good job of fight over the screen that time by Nick Honor. Uh, so you know that's what you, know, you get Tamar Bates or Sean East and their ability to make one-on-one -on -one plays. And so on the other end, we're going to see Chris Beard probably taking out Jalen Murray again for this defensive possession. May go with Jamarion Sharp, and yes, he's going with Jamarion Sharp. Yep. Rim protector, obviously, as we know. And the other four guys, they've got the size to switch everything, okay? None of these guys are going to get posted up. But Sean East is... He's a wizard, man. It's almost like he is a wizard at times, how he gets his shot off. He's a warrior tonight. We saw both teams in the double bonus. Oh, oh wow. honor foul wow. by Nunez. Wow. Three free throws coming. It looked like he hit the ball. I didn't see any body contact. Yeah, Chris Beard getting an explanation there from Jeffrey Anderson. So honor, two of two at the line tonight. 87% at the stripe. That was a good out-of-bounds play to get Nick Honor free for it. At least he got free for a look. So it didn't look like much ball right. here. Yeah, I, not much to see from either angle. Yeah, he doesn't step into the landing spot. And it looks like on the way up is where he was able to just barely touch the basketball. Either way, though, Nick he's Honor a, yeah, has he's to step a, up and make some tough free throws. Critical, and he goes three out of three. Two-point game. Ole Miss is once 21-point lead late in the first. Whittled down to two. 45 seconds to go. There's Burrell, drives in, lays it up, he gets fouled. And he's going to the free throw line to maybe extend this back to a two possession game. Drop a play to get your best score of the basketball and allow him to go one on one. Doesn't use the screen, explosive enough right there. I, I thought he was going to turn that one over and yoke it. But you see, Sean East got his wrist right there, so lost the basketball. Fourth foul on Sean East. Morrell, 74% at the line this year. These two have put on quite a show. Morrell with 20, East with 27. Just a bitter battle going down to maybe the final possession. Yeah, Coach Beard keeps Juju Murray in the game, brings in Sharp, Nunez comes out. Two clutch ones. So yes. it's now back to a two-possession lead with 35.7 to go. A little backcourt pressure from Ole Miss. Thirty seconds. They got to get to work. Needs something maybe at the rim. Bates bounce pass to Sean, knocked out by Morrell. Great sleight of hand, and so the Tigers inbound now with 24.4 to go. And the Rebels, you see, again Missouri trying to take advantage of the size they have over Juju Murray, but Jamarion Sharp says. Uh, They've talked about that in the timeout. Sharp, you sit right in the middle of the paint. You come over for help. Which yeah. at times will leave Aiden Shaw open like it just did, but then the other guys got to come down and dig and help on that rotation. Well, Missouri just took its last time out. So if you're Dennis Gates there, you've you got to get something here where sure. you get some points. And you're essentially going over what are you going to do defensively then after 
Ole Miss presumably inbounds the ball. That's if they make a shot. Right. Well, you certainly got the last time they took it, the ball out of bounds underneath the hoop. Drew up a great play for Nick Honor to come out and get a three-point shot off. So you got to be aware of that. Uh, if you don't get that, Missouri, you got to score quick. Obviously, get into that press. See if you can get a steal. If not, you got a foul. So he's going over all of that right now. What's at stake? Missouri picking up its first conference win. That's what. They were down 19 at half. They've outscored Ole Miss 48-33 in the second. Within four, they've got it. Looking for honor again. Honor launches. That's offline. Breakfield fights for the board. He's got it. And then he's fouled by Shaw with 18.1 to go. So Nick Honor has made some amazing end of game three point shots. Uh, he doesn't lack for confidence. I think in his mind he felt like, Coach, if I can get this off, I got a chance to make it. This whole Miss team is going to go back to the free throw line here now, Pat. Breakfield has lived at the line. He's 8 of 12. It just went 1 of 1 and 6 in an extremely difficult February. And so they're 18.1 away from beginning March with a W. They've got two more games left in the regular season at Georgia against Texas A&M. They are. They've had their eyes on that NCAA, You're an NCAA tournament, tournament team, no all doubt. Year, they're a tournament caliber squad. They need a, a flourishing finish to the year. However, first things first. Two possession lead with 16 to go. Honor slips into the paint, lays it up, bounces out. Shaw couldn't stuff it home, but he taps it back in. 9.5 to go. So you've got to go for the steal or foul quick. Bates sends Murray to the line. And Tamar Bates is just fouled out with 9.4 to go. It's Jalen Murray headed to the free throw line. And the athleticism, Aiden Shaw, giving Missouri, keeping hope alive for Missouri. As we know, it's going to come down to a free throw contest. Good attack by Nick Arn. Didn't have the initial three point pull up. Aiden Shaw and his incredible athleticism, though. Staying with the play. And, I, you know, Tamar Bates, one, you know, your second leading scorer, you want him on the floor. However, you had to, you couldn't waste time, right? If you're Ole Miss, you couldn't waste, I mean, excuse me, if you're Missouri, getting the clock stopped and getting Ole Miss on the free throw line. Bates exits with 13 points. Murray, two big ones. So it remains a six point lead. If you're Mizzou, you got to just hoist one up here when you get across the timeline. Seven seconds. Honor. Instead, he's going to take it to the rim. Puts it up. That's good. Three seconds to go. It's still a two-possession lead for Ole Miss. Murray foul with 1.8. And that, that and your Ole Miss and virtually locks it so, up. So, listen, we talked about this, and all the metrics and the net rankings, and they talk, we just showed the th non-conference strength of schedule and all that but listen Ole Miss is winning those games so you should be penalized that you didn't win by enough in those games so to my to me they're NCAA tournament team no question well they're gonna improve to 20 and 19 tonight get back to 7 and 9 in SEC play we were talking to Chris Beard about the importance of closing out the regular season strong he goes what happens if we go 3 and 0 close out I'll the regular season? I'll tell you what, season? coach, you're in. That's exactly Get your dancing what he mentioned. shoes. Anything can happen. <laughs> Get your dancing shoes. Some incredible fight and resilience from Missouri in the second half. It's ultimately not enough, and the Rebels are now 20 and 9 on the year. Their first 20 win season in five years, and they pick up a crucial victory after a. Tough uh, February. They begin March on some good footing. Yeah, Missouri, from their standpoint, they have been right.